Ladies, how are we all? Dr. Lucy here with an episode of Cooking, Coaching and Conversations with my very cheery ho 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 Christmas hat. So um, I'm just looking at my screens. There's a few little weird, you know, again, one day, one day I'll have a television studio, but at the moment I'm looking at my Facebook screen and I've got half my head mixed in and the distortion of the screen makes me kind of go outwards. But anyway, my main job today is to make sure I don't fall over. That's my one job. Okay, so if I get through without doing that, then I'll be very, very happy girl. Um, so, welcome. Thank you all for joining me. I have an awesome recipe today that I um, have, of course, just made up on a bit of a whim. But I was thinking, with Christmas coming, that we kind of need a couple of options for, you know, party platters. So if you're going somewhere and you want to take something, so I'm thinking today that I'm actually going to make these chicken balls. So I must have thought about this in advance because I ordered some chicken mince and I rarely do because I find chicken mince a bit boring, but I thought for these balls it will be really good. So of course, I can't just make one lot, so I've doubled the mixture and I'm going to split it and show you two different ways to do it. So basically, in this little jar here, this bowl here, I've just got some chicken mince, like easy. Chicken mince is so much easier to work with than beef. It's a little bit softer and you can just mush it in. So I've got a kilo of chicken mince and then I'm gonna do amazingly magic things. So I happen to have, look at me, look at me go, hey? Don't I get, I get a round of applause for grating my own cheese. Hello, Lucy. Um, so 125 grams of grated cheese. You can buy it in the packet if you want. I just happen to have a block here and I just grated it up. Now, this is cheddar, but I'm actually thinking it would probably be better with Parmesan because it's just a little bit firmer and not quite so melty, but I don't have any Parmesan, so bad luck. I missed, um, I missed you guys actually all last week. It was funny and part of my head going, Oh, I'll have a week off, that'll be good. Then the other part of me went, God, oh, it's been so long, I feel like I've missed everybody. So, seriously, this is gonna be so super easy. So, I'm just mixing these two in. And you know what, it probably would be even easier if I did it in separate bowls. And I'm gonna mix it into separate bowls in a minute. So, 125 grams of chopped cheese. I've done cheddar, but you could do Parmesan and just mix this all in. Then if you weren't splitting it, you'd do everything in the one bowl. Um, but it's got an egg in it, so, and it's just one, so I can't split half an egg, so I'm gonna do a magic trick. So I'm actually now just gonna dump half of this over here, because I've got a different flavor that I want for this one, and half of this one here. And then magic trick me is basically, I'm gonna get my egg. And I'm just gonna chop it in here, mix it up, and then divide it in two. Just fling that over here. Um, so how have you all been anyway? I'm sort of looking over here. Uh, we all went hungry last week, oh, Lani, you did not. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, so anyway, I'm just mixing up this egg. As I said, you could make it a lot easier for yourself and not do two flavors, but, so you know when you go to events, like you could take these and they're just little balls and you stick a um, toothpick in them. So I'm just basically gonna spread half this egg in here. So how's this for being clever? I'm just doing a tea tablespoon at a time so that they both get the same amount. Tablespoon. There we go. Now. Salt, you have to have salt, okay. <laughs> I look great with my hat on. Oh, hello Fee, how are you darling? I'm not sure I do look that great with my hat on, but it's Christmas and one of my things is I'm trying to, as you know, I'm thinking, we all often think that if we're not participating in all, the, in all the Christmas food, that somehow we're being grinchy. And so I actually wanna tell you guys that you're not being grinchy. You can still have fun. I'm putting in a bit of extra salt because I do like salt. Um, you can have some extra fun and you don't have to be grinchy about it. So the food does not make the festivity. Okay, one half is going to get my mingle dill and garlicky stuff. Ugh. 
Remember, Mingle doesn't use any caking agents. So sometimes you go in there and it's a bit of a rock. I'm just gonna give it a bash. I'd much rather just give it a bash than deal with the anti-caking agents. Okay. Now, I don't know how much I'm gonna put in. I'll vaguely measure. <laughs> yeah, it's not that measuring. One, okay, I'm just going to bash this a bit more. Okay, so I'm putting in maybe a good three teaspoons of this stuff in here. And then with this one, here's my magic trick. You know, I love sun-dried tomato. I've already drained the oil off, feeling so clever. And here's a hack. Instead of chopping the tomatoes, you just get a bit of some scissors in and you just mush them like that. Does anyone else use scissors? Kelly, we're cooking chicken balls, like ones that you can take with you to a function or something like that or I'll be having them for tea. So in this pile are going the sun-dried tomatoes and I'll just chip top them up a bit more. And then in this one, look at me, I'm seriously nailing it tonight. I've even got a spare spoon. I am putting in smoky. So it's smoky, it's a, you could use a smoky paprika, you could use the mingle barbecue flavor if you want. I happen to have, this is an older flavor, I don't even know if they still make this one. But anyway, I'm gonna give this a whirl in here and have some smoky ones. So again, I'll just vaguely measure, only so I don't put in half a thing. I reckon one, two, three. Now, mush all this together and then that's it. Like seriously, that's it, there's nothing else in here. I happen to have handy, just in case it's too wet, either some almond meal or my new favourite, hemp seeds. So if you get there and for some reason you happen to have watery chicken mince or a gigantic egg or for whatever reason, you just think it's going to be a bit moist. <gasps> I said it. Moist. Um, then you can fling a bit of that in too. So now... What some people do, and I don't, because I don't have one, is an ice cream scoop. So if you've got some old ice cream scoop laying around because you know you don't eat ice cream anymore, um, you could use that to make your balls. But I'm just gonna use a spoon and a bit of, and some hands. So that's my smoky barbecue one. And then I'll mush this one together. So you can see, so far prep, like what, seven minutes about, because of course I wasn't quite on time. And then I put the oven on at 180 or 190, depending on your oven. My oven's a bit slow, so I have to put it up a bit. Put it on fan forced, and I'll cook these for about 20 minutes. Um, unlike, so remember when I did my fish burgers? Man, wasn't that, wasn't that an awesome recipe? I can't believe that one. That was such a great, oh my God, I've got a wing it recipe. Um, because you're using a tin, when you're using tin salmon or tin tuna, it's actually cooked. So... It doesn't matter if it's not sort of cooked through, but obviously with chicken mince, we want to make sure it's cooked. So what I would do with this is get one in the middle of your tray, chop that open and make sure it's actually cooked. Hello, husband. Someone's walking by. Um, so Cheryl, yes, chicken balls, chicken and cheese balls. So a kilo, all together, a kilo of chicken mince, 125 grams of shredded cheese, it can be cheddar or I would like to try next time with parmesan but I didn't have any. Um, one egg between the two or one egg for the whole lot and some flavorings. So on one lot I've done a couple of a teaspoons of smoky barbecue flavor and in the other one I've done garlic, the garlic and ranchy one um, with some sun-dried tomatoes. You can do fresh herbs, you know, if I used to have and I, that one of those um, uh, what's it called? It's this kind of contraption that is white and it has four seed, four um, kind of bays in it and you can grow your seeds in it and it's got the light and everything. But honestly, it was actually a bit too much for me. So um, I might put it on Facebook Market or eBay or something like that. So yeah, I'll just give that one a little bit more. Now I've got lots to talk about today. Um, so first thing is I just want to get my brain concentrated so that I don't roll chicken balls the size of bloody golf balls. Now, 
Before I start though, I want to show you my new cup. Okay, how's this for a beauty? So, you know, I, um, I'm going to just give you a quick snapshot. I have, you know, I run retreats for doctors, wellbeing for doctors, and in one of them, um, I do a talk on resilience. And part of resilience is, there's a whole heap of strategies in how you can increase your resilience, and one of them is this concept called savoury. And I just happen to use a cup analogy and talk about filling your cup and emptying your cup. Anyway, I was on the T2 website the other day, just for a little three hours, and I saw this, A, a giant cup, so that's part of resilience, is getting a big cup, and then at the bottom, it's got some words, and the words say, no, I can't remember them, it says, stop and savour every moment. So this is actually, I decided this was actually made for me, somebody was out there, the universe, looking after me, so I had to buy it, of course. And I've got a beautiful green, um, a rose-scented green tea in there. It's amazing. Okay. So a couple of things have come up in the last couple of weeks that I want to talk to you about. One is the idea that you do not need to eat everything in sight if you're worried about being a Christmas Grinch. Okay. Christmas is not about the food. We're told it is. It's actually not. It's about the people. Okay, so the people. Now, they can be your family, but they may not be. Okay, and I'm very mindful of the fact that at this time of the year, again, media spends a lot of time telling you, telling you all about Christmas is about family, but for a lot of people, their family has caused them a lot of trauma. So we need to be mindful. It doesn't necessarily have to be your blood family. It's just about somebody, people that are close to you. So, ugh, I should be wearing gloves, not because I'm worried about... Um, germs because I've washed my hands but just because this is actually super slimy now remembering it is meant to be slimy it doesn't actually matter and in fact it makes it easy to make the little balls um, so first thing Christmas is about uh, friends or close ones loved ones whether they be family or not it doesn't matter um, it is about connection and connecting with people and again, we have been conditioned to believe that connecting with people is always about the food. And you can make it about that if you want to, but you don't have to. It can actually just be about the people. The food is the sign show. Um, now, what else did I want to talk about? I'll just get this all going. Um, I want to about, talk about, and, and Mary touched on this. Um, did everybody here watch Mary's um, masterclass the other night? It's bloody good. Um, I was very happy. She, she's a, she does a good job. Um, but, you know, this idea of all or nothing. You know, again, it's a bit of diet culture where conditioned to believe that if we're not doing perfectly, we just have to throw in the towel. Okay, and sometimes when we are perfect, or do air quotes, but I've got chicken fingers. Sometimes when we are perfect, the problem is that it can be a little bit unsustainable. So it's either too rigid with not enough flexibility or you're actually doing a whole lot of stuff. And this is what I was talking to somebody about yesterday. She was doing all the things in lockdown because it was easier. She didn't have to drive to work. She had more time. She didn't have to worry about kids' lunches because the kids were all at home. Now, gone back to work, kids are back at school and all of a sudden, the control has just slipped a bit. And so it suddenly feels like it's a bit harder. But it doesn't have to feel like that. Um, it is, it is different, and that's the word I like to use. It's different. It doesn't mean it's hard. It's just different. And remembering, our brain doesn't like different. It likes patterns. It likes repetition. So if if you do something the way you've always done it, it prefers to do that. If you suddenly go, we're going to do it differently, it goes, what? I don't want to do that. Like this chicken goop. What? Don't really want to do that. This is going to make truckloads. I'm going to have about a million of these. So, um, you could halve the recipe, I suppose, but then you're left with half an egg. What are you going to do with that? So, you might as well just use it all and freeze them. Oh, that's the other thing. You can freeze these. You can freeze them in advance. So, you can roll the balls and freeze them like this and then stick them into a bag. Or, you can um, cook them and then freeze them. Here's another tray I happen to have over here. You'll see 
My balls are far from perfect, but chicken's very, very forgiving. So um, one of the things I would really think a lot about this Christmas is, doesn't have to be perfect, but if the focus is on real food, then that makes, that makes life a bit easier. One of the other things, I was having a little chat with one of our members, I uh, can't remember if it was yesterday or this morning, my days are all blurring into one again, um, and we talked about traditions. And here's a funny story, right? So we had traditional, you know, Christmas lunch when I was growing up, went over to my aunties and my nana always cooked Christmas pudding. And we hated it. As kids, we absolutely hated it. It was this big torturous experiencing and we would be half vomiting and my mum didn't want to be rude so she's there trying to hide the pudding and um, you know she's half eating most of it and we're all blah and every every year on the way over we'd be there'd be wailing do we have to eat Nana's puddings it's so disgusting and it was all about this thing of it we didn't want to be rude and you know we kind of thought well Nana's gone to effort to make this pudding the thing is we really hated it and it was this weird I mean isn't it weird it's weird that you would expect children, oh, my battery in, in um, I'm just letting you know, people, that my battery in Instagram has dying. So if you're watching on Instagram, I'm not sure if you can still see me. But this expectation that we didn't want to offend Nana, so we would have to eat, eat this Christmas pudding, and the only way my mum could see out of it was to eat it all herself, which she didn't want it. She didn't like it either, but you know. And so it's this really interesting concept that we do at where we put a lot, when we put other people's needs up above our own. Really interesting. Does anybody else have that kind of idea that you've got this situation and you eat stuff that you, not only, I mean, it's bad enough having to eat stuff that, you know, having to sort of talk yourself off the ledge about stuff you like, but being forced to eat stuff you don't like, it's just nuts. So anyway, I was talking to this lovely, our lovely member about this, and she was saying that, yeah, actually she makes a Christmas pudding every year and it's this big event, but nobody likes it. Nobody eats it, and then it sits in her freezer or her cupboard, and she's tempted to eat it. So it does make things a little bit tricky. I'm throwing this tea towel, not throwing it out, I'm throwing it in the wash after this. Um, so that's my, that's the first lot of chicken balls. I'm just gonna lean over and turn on this Instagram screen if I can, just watch out, lowlings. Oh no, I can't reach, bad luck. Sorry, Instagrammers, if you can't see me anymore, I can't do much about it. Um, and then this is just the balls that are the, um, you know, the ranch one. So basically, what have I made? Half a, half a lot makes two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 21. So somewhere between 20 and 24 balls, depending on how big you roll them. That goes, and then they go in the oven. And that's basically it. Um, so what will happen is they'll shrink down a little bit. I'll show you a picture of them when I'm done. Um, but I won't bother them. I won't bore you waiting for them to cook. Um, but one of the things I, yeah, so the things I'm focusing on at the moment, there's absolutely no way I'm ever in my entire life eating stuff I don't like again, nor would I make anyone else do that, nor would I expect anyone else to do that. So if there's stuff in your family that's part of tradition that you don't like, it is really, really important to honor yourself in that and actually just stop. Because as I said, it's hard enough focusing on the stuff that you do like, let alone putting stuff in your body that doesn't serve you well. So that's tip one, number one. Tip number two, you don't have to eat all of the things. Christmas is, yes, it's once a year, but the food is available all year round. Remember scarcity, there is no scarcity. If you're allowing yourself to eat off plan on Christmas day, that's fine, do that. But you don't need to shovel everything in because whatever you decide that you wanted to eat, it will always be available to you for the rest of your life. So there is no, there is no scarcity. It is not a once in a lifetime opportunity. It is a once every day opportunity. It's just that we, we kind of attach the word Christmas to it. Christmas food, like traditional Christmas food, is actually super easy. You know, it's, it's your meats, protein and, and some vegetables. Like how easy is that? 
Um, we have pavlova at Christmas and I use a low carb recipe. Just Google low carb pavlova. It's actually amazing. Tastes just like normal pavlova. And then I have um, like a pavlova. I'll often make little ones and then you have like a pavlova topping station if you like. So I made a low carb curd. I've made a low carb chocolate saucy stuff for the chocolate people, um, raspberry sauce. And then I did make one with some peppermint crisp just to satisfy the traditionalists over, over there somewhere. Um, so it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be hard. I will tell you lovelies, if you're watching, we have Santa's little helper. I know you've probably heard us bang on about it, um, but it starts tomorrow. So if you were thinking of joining, today's your last chance. Um, it starts tomorrow morning and it's a little advent calendar of gifts from us to you about helping you stay on track. Okay, so helping you keep your mind sharp, keep your mind focused, and the gifts include things like recipe books. There's some beautiful recipe books. There might be a hypnosis one day, there might be a um, mantra, there might be just a little pep talk, nothing more than five minutes, because we know it's a busy time of the year and you haven't got lots of hours in the day to be sitting there watching lectures on, you know, how to lose weight for the last time. But this is just an extra guide. You get it for free if you join Momentum, hooray. And so you can either buy a little Santa, Santa's little helper by itself. You can join Momentum and you will get it for free for the same price, Pretty, that's a bit of a no-grainer. Or if you want to, we've just had a little flurry of annual members, which you may have heard me talking about. So that's signing up for our program for 12 months. And with that, there's three bonuses, basically. You get two months for free. You get two 30-minute coaching calls to use whenever you like. And we've got a special Christmas surprise that gets put in the post straight away and will be at your door in a couple of days. Lovelies, that's it from me. I hope that uh, I, over the next couple of weeks I will be doing some more Christmas cooking. Um, I might even make my low carb pavlova, but it's a bit hard to do it in half an hour. But I hope this has been helpful and I would love, love, love to hear your comments on it and share your Christmas tips too. All right, my loves, bye for now.